Hello my friends and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood and we've had quite the day. Well that's reassuring. After she wasn't really moving or talking at all, I was kind of really worried about her. And I'm actually not going to pick up any equipment for a little bit because we're almost level 70, so I'm just going to forsake the equipment until then because then we're just going to we're just going to turn it in for our artifact gear anyway. Yeah, Fredola is a dirty cheat, apparently. No, it's a pity we haven't heard word from Thancred on this matter. Um, okay. So close to the next dang zone, and they're like, LOL, nope, let's do something else instead first. And what's really kind of frustrating is they still haven't talked about any sort of updates about Ishtola's condition. That has just been completely glossed over in, in all of this. Now, obviously we're, we're meant to believe that, yeah, she was in pretty bad shape, but, you know, she she's got the proper attention, and while it's going to be a long road, she's she's eventually going to be okay. And, and I totally understand that and everything, but, you know, how about in, like, some of this breather room where we need to figure out our next plan, somebody even talks about going to visit her and check up on her. You know, maybe fill her in on some of the things that happened to us while we were in the East, you know? Ooh, story time! Well, Lisa's not right here. She, and camera won't let me pan, but she's a bit of a voice behind me. I wanted to show you this house. My house. You mean, this is where you grew up? Aye. Not much to look at, is it? Same could be said of the village. It was damn near impossible to live off the land, barren as it was. Which is why so many of us traded our plowshares for swords. Swords and uniforms, mind. We became military men. Tensions were rising between Alamigo and the Empire, and there was always a need for more soldiers to watch the border. It was only a matter of time before the first skirmishes broke out. 
It's a frightening thing to face Magitek armor for the first time. But after a lot of trial and error, I found ways to bring them down. After a few victories, people even said I had a knack for it. And then one day they hit us. Hard. I was wounded and sent home to recover. Back here. Will you remain silent for fear of the Mad King's vengeance? Of his eyes and ears in the shadows and his knives in the dark? You who call this living dishonor our nation? It is but a slow death. Liberty or death? Liberty or death? If this be your creed, then raise up your hands, raise up your voices! Together we will tear Theodoric from the throne! Together we will reclaim our freedom! Um, okay, but you just wrote that on another man's house. Uh, not cool. Send you home to men, did they? Aye, sir. Garlian's got the better of us. The... the Chirurgians say I'm healing well. So it won't be long now. Liberty or death, is it? Tell me, soldier. What do you think those words mean? We... we must needs be willing to die for liberty. Spoken like a true patriot. But liberty should not be the end in of itself. Liberty is a chance to build something better. A stronger, more prosperous home for our people. It's not quick or easy work. And it is never truly finished. But if you neglect it, then sooner or later, you look up to find you've traded one tyrant for another. Well, sir, I, I've never asked for much. Never wanted to live like a king, just wish it were a little bit easier is all, for me and everyone else. And I'm, I'm willing to die for that, if that's what it takes. Dying is easy, soldier. Living is harder. Rest, mend. Regain your strength. You'll need it in the days to come. And may at one day we will need it too. Conrad chose you as his successor, Lise, and I will not gainsay his decision. I have but one question to ask. Liberty or death? Those were Curtis's words and his creed. Will you swear by your father's creed before your comrades and the gods? Liberty or death? That's all you can hope for in war. Father understood that. And you want to know if I do, too. I swear to you, here and now, I will fight 
until the end. Be it liberty or be it death. But the freedom we win must be for every Alamegan, even ones like Fordola, though they may hate us, and the Ananta, though they may fear us. We'll fight, and we'll talk, and we'll find a way to make it work for all of us. Compared to all that, retaking our home will seem like the easy part. Hmm. A good oath. And there is naught else to say. You are indeed your father's daughter. See, it's things like that where Lix really shines and shows why she is deserving to, you know, be the leader of the resistance and all that. And then they had to ruin it by bringing her dad into into the whole thing. And need I remind you, yes, it is written right on this wall right here. Curtis vandalized another man's house. What the heck, Curtis? Like you you just wrote a damning phrase on another man's house and the in the first either you know, loyal to the Mad King or Imperial who spots that on the wall and, and gets pissed off. Yeah, you just you just put a warrant out on Ravon's head for that. Holy crap, Curtis. That was that was just not cool. And I even thought this way way back when when on on my first playthrough of Stormblood two years ago, when I saw that cutscene, I'm like because I, I had seen, obviously, the writing on, on the wall just before the cutscene started, and I'm like... And it was already clarified to be Rampon's house, and I'm like, what the heck, dude? I'm like, why did you go and do that? But it is somewhat... Glad to have them mention the Mad King. And I'm not going to go into detail about that whole thing, but needless to say, during those times, the Empire breaching up upon their borders wasn't their only or their worst issue. And it's a part of their history they don't tend to talk about. They tend to blame all their damn problems on the Imperials. And don't get me wrong, the Empire has done a heck of a lot of crap around here in the past 20 damn years. But it's not like they were really exactly living in peace in the immediate time right before the Empire came and, and set up shop. And it's kind of disappointing that the game doesn't really mention that because I think it is important because when they talk about you know bringing back the good old days and stuff like that they don't really specify what they mean you know well at least I wasn't really moving during that um Probably because she knew she had been been beaten and she wasn't going to make it worse, but <laughs> that was scary there for a moment. Why are we always just being watched? Aren't these Imperials gonna learn that... <sighs> to sneak up on, up on me and get caught doing so just means your own death. I know you're doing your jobs and all that, but... Just cut your losses and run, and run like a chicken.
Uh, hi, who are you people? Never a dull moment around here. Not ever. So I'm gonna cut just to make a pit stop here real quick because this this quest right here is is the final aether current, so Alright, that little excursion aside. Aw oh, crap. Can't catch a break around any around anything around here, can we? Well, yeah. Now there may be a bounty on our heads, again. Apparently, nobody told those poor lads who we were and that they stood no chance against us. Kind of crappy situation. Okay, apparently we're talking really, really loud. That's not good. Why, why did we leave Alize alone then? If you can hear our conversation from all the way wherever the heck you are. Yeah, it's kind of a crappy life to just have to put up with it, especially if you get this clanking hunk of metal just right around the corner. So now, now, finally we can fly in this zone. Thank goodness. That's why I went all the way out of my way to get the, the stupid last Aether Current quest. Oh, this will make travel a lot easier. So what are we going to do now? I can absolutely do that. She's my friend. I want the best for her. So they're gonna take care of the transport. We just gotta make sure, you know, we get her, quote unquote, checked in. And make sure we get the best bed with the fluffiest pillows made of the best chocobo down. So we really haven't 
spent much time here in the Reach at all. And it seems nothing really much has changed since the last time we were here. Yep. Everything looks same old, same old. I have a friend along the way. Do we have any hot cocoa and marshmallows on hand? I understand if we don't, but... Ah, oh, right on time. Yeah, that make it seem like she can't walk, but she's sitting up, so... She seems to be... okay. Well, you took a nap, and that's pretty... Pretty much it, you know? <laughs> we, there hasn't really been much time to get new intel that you haven't been a part of. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I really do like how they use least not only for her sake, but to, to signify the player that she's, she's been paying attention to the relationship between these two. And I definitely really kind of, you know, I always keep saying every time I like something that I really appreciate and, and I'm fond of this, but it, 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 it doesn't stop being true, you know, and especially since... Lise had her own sister that, you know, she, you know, was close with, even though we don't actually see that relationship. You know, it, it at least gives you just the sense of, you know, just how much she misses it and how important that sort of thing is to her. And you don't get the same thing with Yastola and Yamitra, by the way. At least not nearly to that, the same extent. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, what do you think? I know it's a bit old-fashioned, but in a traditional sort of way, Ida wore it whenever she could. Not that I'm pretending to be her or anything. Not again. It's just... If this is the last battle we fight to free El Amigo, then she ought to be a part of it. Aww. Tatyra might be a little unhappy with you over this, though, but I'm sure she'll understand. It's nice of you to say so. And a bit embarrassing, but mostly nice. Anyway, the real reason I asked you here was to sneak in a warm-up before the final battle. Oh? There's this place I know where monks used to spar as part of their training. Care to join me? Sure.
So obviously, even though they can't really show it, I actually do really like that, obviously, this scene is in the trailer. Um, quite differently, obviously. But I do like how they, they actually find a way to, to incorporate it in, in the main scenario and not just have it be... You know, show off to, you know, build hype for, for your expansion and whatnot and stuff like that. Like, most of the other scenes in, in most trailers, um, well, at least the expansion trailers, not any patch trailers, don't really show any gameplay footage. It's it's all there just to, to hype you up and just give you a glimpse at, at things and... That's one of the only scenes that actually does translate to the main scenarios. Every time you see a game, like especially Final Fantasy XIV, an expansion trailer, do not take what you see at face value. This is one of the f people like to quote this as that that whole scene is, but but that happened in main scenario, so like therefore like all the rest of it is canon. It's like no no not necessarily. That this this is this is the exception to the rule. But yet again, I, I still say, you know, I, I do find it nice that they they do incorporate it in of sorts into the main scenario in a way that actually does does make sense. Like here, the battles where we're coming up on are, are the culmination of, of her dreams and, and, and Ida's dreams and, and that, that of all of Alamigo. So her wearing something that, you know, Ida often wore, where the heck she got this at the last minute in Ronger's Reach, that I have no idea. Maybe, maybe there's a there's a closet somewhere with, with Ida's last effects or something like that after, you know, she was killed or something. I don't know. We're just going to assume that for the time being. You know, on top of, you know, a, you know, a sacred statue over here um it's, it's just a really really fitting overall and you know probably helps Lise you know clear her head and, and think about everything that has come before this and everything that is going to come after after it and and again just just shows how important you know her dream is to her how Ida's dream was to her and how how she plans to use this dream for everybody who lives in Garabanya, not just the people of the Resistance. As she said, you know, she wants to include people like Fordola and the Ananta in this, e even though there are really, really messy situations. She's doing this for everybody who calls Garabanya home, and it just it just culminates in in this one moment. And since she's obviously the fighter, you know, among us among the scions because you know again she's kind of you know the quote unquote the dumb one and fighting is 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 what she's best at it it just it just really brings it all all nicely together and the fact that it is in the trailer is is just it just adds to 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 the total touch that just makes the the, the symbolism just just completely come together and just work and they don't have to go on, you know, wordy dialogue or anything like that to get that point across. You know, all I need to tell tell you is, yeah, this is this is Ida's dress. I want, you know, this is my way of carrying her with me. Hey, let's have a fight. And just like that, you know, you have all the pieces of of the puzzle put together. And it's pretty dang awesome how they do that. So that's going to be it for this episode. And we'll see what Lise has in store for us next time for what we're going to do for our immediate plans to take back this country once and for all. I'll see you next time, friends.